yield to Senator Sessions and then Attorney General Holder. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'm glad we could have this hearing today. Uh, we agree on a number of things on the matter of the prosecution of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and the 9-11 terrorists. We don't agree. Mr. Attorney General, I, I appreciate you, enjoy working with you. Um, you've got a tough job. Uh, when I complain to my wife about this or that, she looks me straight in the eye and says, don't blame me, you ask for the job. So um, you've got a tough job, but you ask for it. You know, uh, with your experience, you know, the, uh, you know what you're asking for before you got it. Um, let me acknowledge several people in the audience today. David Beamer uh, from Florida and Alice Hoagland from California are here. They came here for the hearing today. David lost his son, Todd, and Alice lost her son, Mark, on Flight 93. Lisa Dolan is here. She lost her husband, uh, Navy Captain Robert Dolan, at the Pentagon on September 11th. Uh, Deborah Burlingame, I believe, is here. She lost her brother, a pilot. Also, we are honored that Tim Brown from the New York Fire Department is here. Tim worked night after night on the rescue and recovery efforts of the World Trade Center. So it's a privilege to have each of you with us today. On September 11, 2001, our nation was attacked by a savage gang of terrorists, people who had previously stated as Ben Laden did, that they were at war with the United States. Their intent was to kill innocent Americans and bring ruin to the United States. The death and destruction they caused in New York, Washington, and Pennsylvania was an act of war. Uh, at the time, that was crystal clear to us. Uh, if there is now, among some folks in Washington, any confusion on that point, it's because time, I think, has dulled their memory or because other matters have clouded their judgment. But the American people remember that day well, and they know that the facts have not changed. President Bush responded to the 9-11 terrorist acts swiftly and forcefully, and we have been blessed uh, that the dedicated work of millions of Americans has prevented similar attacks of, of that scale. Today, we remain engaged in the two long struggles in Afghanistan and Iraq. We wish the work there were, was easy, uh, but it is not, uh, and this effort is not. As we sit in this chamber, 188,000 American men and women in uniform fight tirelessly to root out terrorism from foreign battlefields. Our military and intelligence personnel are, in fact, at war this very day seven days a week under dangerous and adverse conditions because this Congress is authorized and asked them to go there, and we sent them there. The best way to honor these men and women is to work just as hard and just as smartly to ensure that what we do supports them and the goals that we have set for them. Regrettably, when I look at the policies taking shape under the new administration, I fear that that is not the case. I just and worried about those decisions. Over the past nine months, we've seen uh, the administration continue to delay providing clear leadership to our troops in Afghanistan, call for an investigation and potential prosecution of CIA agents who risk their lives to capture dangerous terrorists and who previously have been uh, uh, cleared of uh, investigation. They've cut a deal on a media shield legislation to protect individuals when they leak classified information to the mass media in a way that I think is not good. They can concede to a weakened form of the Patriot Act, a vital legislative tool for our intelligence community, and decline to provide basic information, to date at least, uh, that we're going to have to have as we go forward with the Fort Hood investigation and now announce that they will bring Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the self-proclaimed mastermind of 9-11, back to Manhattan to be treated as a common criminal in U.S. courts. Taken together, I think these policies signal to uh, our people, to our uh, country, and to our military, and to the international community that for the United States, fighting global terrorism is not the priority it once was. 
that we can return to a pre-9-11 mentality. The problem is this, Al-Qaeda doesn't agree. They continue to seek to do us harm, as we all well know, and we must continue to be vigilant as we track down these terrorists and bring them to justice. And we must use, <coughs> excuse me, use all lawful uh, tools uh, to do so. Lives are at stake. Today's hearing will focus on, uh, among other issues, the Attorney General's decision to prosecute Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and four other terrorists in U.S. courts rather than in military courts. I believe this decision is dangerous. I believe it's misguided. I believe it is unnecessary. It represents a departure from my long-standing policy that these kind of cases should be uh, treated under the well-established rules of war. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed is a terrorist, uh, uh, is alleged to be a terrorist. He's alleged not to be a common criminal, but who has a desire not for ill-gotten gains, but for the destruction of our country. The correct way to try him is by a military uh, tribunal. Uh, this distinction is important because the military courts and civilian courts have different functions. The United, uh, the United States court system was not designed to try unlawful enemy combatants. And Mr. Holder, I don't think these are normal defendants. These are people we are at war with, and we are dropping bombs on them this very day, attacking their lairs wherever they hide. Uh, the fabulous policewoman who went straight to Hassan at Fort Hood firing her weapon uh, was in effect at participating in a war effort. The enemy who could have uh, been obliterated on the battlefield on one day but was captured instead does not then become a common American criminal. They are first a prisoner of war once they're captured. The laws of war say, as uh, did um, Lincoln and Grant, that the prisoners will not be released when the war, un until the war ends. How absurd is it to say that we will release people who plan to attack us again? Secondly, as part of their military activities, if they violate the laws of war, then and only then may they be tried for crimes. That's uh, what um, happened to the Nazi saboteurs in the ex parte querying case in World War II when they were tried by military commissions. Military commission trials are fair, they are recognized not only by our country, but nations all over the world. Far from seeing uh, our actions as some sort of demonstration of American fairness, I suspect our cold-blooded enemies and our clear-eyed friends both must wonder what is going on in our heads. Are we, they must ask themselves, still serious about this effort? So... As former Attorney General uh, Michael McCasey wrote in 2007, terrorism prosecutions in this country have unintentionally provided terrorists with rich sources of intelligence. Mr. Attorney General, we're concerned about what's happening today. We respect and like you, but this is a serious question, and we'll have a number of, uh, we'll raise a number of issues as we go throughout the, uh, the hearing. Thank you. <clears throat> well, obviously, Senator Sessions and I have a different view on this, but uh, there will be different views here, and that's why we thank you for coming here. Although I must admit, Senator Sessions, that I'm delighted to hear somebody from Alabama quote approvingly uh, Ulysses S. Grant and Abraham Lincoln. This is uh, the world has come full circle. And they were winners, too. Um, Mr. Uh, well, and appreciate that acknowledgement, too, but the, uh, uh, we probably best leave this one alone. Um, I would put in the record the letter I sent to John Brennan, the assistant to the President for Homeland Security and Counterterrorism, asking for the, uh, when they finished their, uh, their investigation, that this committee be able to see what we had found both what went right and what went wrong. 